Hello and welcome back everybody to Sarleon's EverQuest Adventures. This is Dustin presenting the second part of my Endgame Essentials Guide, where we deep dive into the late level 50s and end game of Project 1999 EverQuest, which is the classic era. In this guide, I'm going to pre be presenting different strategies, items, different clickies and things to look out for to enrich your endgame experience. And I decided to start off here and jump right into rating, or rather planes rating specifically. Just kind of an idea of where to get certain notable items with your planes travels. These are entry level raids. They're classic because they're classic or vanilla EverQuest raids. And by these classic raids, I mean Plane of Sky, Plane of Fear, and Plane of Hate, which were the original raiding zones. An interesting mechanic or feature of the game, especially with necromancers, is that you'll have to travel to each one of the different planes in order to collect pieces for your Scythe of the Shadow Soul. Being this has a lot of bottlenecks because the items don't necessarily have a great drop rate, and that changes probably for the worst as you get into later expansions. The first of all is the Eye of Inneruk, which is found in the Plane of Hate. This item in Classic, from what I remember, drops from Inneruk exclusively or almost exclusively. And then later, I can't remember if it's later in Kunark or Velius, this gets transferred on to a small chance to drop from mini bosses such as the Ash and Bone Broodmaster or Broodmother, whichever it is. Magipotasi is another common drop and some other minis as well. Then comes the Plane of Fear, which featured the zone, has the Slime Blood of Kazakh Thule. The similar feature is that this originally dropped from Kazakh Thule, I believe, in Classic, and later when there was the revamp, it was transferred to the Golems, which are Fright, Dread, or Terror, which are also three day spawns at that point, giving Kazakh Thule a new loot table. Also, Plane of Fear is a nice place. This is more so in Classic and Kunark before the nice armor drops. There's caster sets that drop exclusively in Plane of Fear or Plane of Hate, which I think that's Velius as well. But here you get the caster sets, which the Blighted Armor drops in Plane of Fear. So there's also some interesting item drops that come here. Also the Wand of Darkness, which I've used on my um, End, of Ebola, uh, End of Sebelus video. And then lastly, Plane of Sky, which is the Cloak of Spirock Feathers. This is a more rare drop that you'll find. It could take you a couple weeks of grinding here. It could take some time but there's also some other items to look forward to while you're in your plane of sky adventures like the bloody griffin wristbands and then also there's some necklace that you get with ultra vision so be sure to look at the plane of sky quest they can help you get equipped and get your stats up a little bit since finding nice equipment in early ever quest is kind of difficult but anyway, once you get those three items, the rest of the quest is not very difficult to complete. It's basically taking those three items and doing some running around, some turning in, some talking to people, coming back up to play in the sky, which is kind of annoying because you have to give some gold to the fairy princess and other guilds have to wait eight hours. So yeah, but this is just a brief introduction to the planes here. I mean, there's some other good things that drop, like I think the plane of hate you can get. Gosh, what is it? Wand of Souls, that's what I use. Wand of Souls and Wand of Darkness and Plane of Fear. So yeah, there's some items that you can help to get for kind of more entry level or starter items. And the next part in this video is talking about raiding basically grouping raid roles and different strategies you can fulfill it's good to have an adaptable approach and know the full kit of what necromancers have to offer a lot of what you'll be doing is using your subversion line 
to Twitch and help clerics, but just take an adaptable approach because you're going to be filling in different holes that are in your raid force. Sometimes you have a full raid force, sometimes you won't. So you'll be, you know, healing enchanters, spot healing, be using your mezes for crowd control, charming for extra DPS, along with, you know, other roles, but primarily the most desirable role for Necromancers to fill is, you know, using your buffs in Plane of Hate and Plane of Fear. Necromancers are very desirable in both since they have the Charm Undead spell, but also they have the longest lasting levitation, which you is very valuable in Plane of Hate to prevent you your group and yourself from getting G flux to the ceiling because it's one of the few places that it's got a second floor and if you get launched up the top, well, moms will aggro you through the walls. Which sounds ridiculous, but hey, this is an this is an EverQuest early era. So yeah, make sure you have your dead man floating spells when you come up here. Have everybody buffs, keep everybody buffed so you can avoid those certain issues with the G-Flex mechanics. There are a couple zones that you can't levitate, but those are few and far between. Next would be, obviously, as I mentioned, twitching using your Sedulius or Subversion line. You're going to be using your mana pool almost exclusively to make sure clerics are staying up to speed with their mana regeneration. If you got only a couple clerics, one or two, you can you can help stretch them quite a bit further and help stretch your ra raid quite a bit further. I do have a summon pet here because it helps with DPS. We don't have a ton of roamers. So, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. And in end raiding for Velius, this is more common than Kunark or Classic. But yeah, have the spell mems, have it, have it, be ready to twitch cleric. Next is obviously crowd control. You have root, you have screaming terror, you have charming. Yes, charming can help with crowd control in plane of hate and plane of fear, especially. You can use you can use charming very effectively. I just recommend you understand how to charm effectively. That's where it's cool to go to place like Howling Stones, Carner's Castle. Practice this before you get into it. Then you can also use your Screaming Terror spell. Use this to help out clerics that are getting beat on, enchanters that have pets, druids, other necromancers. So that way you can prevent those classes from dying because druids and necromancers especially have a hard time recharming pets. So be prepared with your trigger finger on that spell. And lastly is to, again, just understand your full spell kit. Understand different spells that aren't used very often. In Plane of Hate and Plane of Fear, I like to use a conjunction, especially with Spike Golems of Scent of Darkness and your Ignite or Incinerate Bones. What you can do with these spells is you can simultaneously get a negative 27 Fire resist on a spike golem when you cast Scent of Darkness, and then after casting it, see here it is, the Ignite Bones will have a stun for 0, 0.0 seconds. Now this is effective on magic immune or magic high magic resistance mobs like spike golems. It doesn't work on blue drakes or dragons or giants, so don't think it, but you can help save a raid from preventing a mob from gating. Just cast early, of course. Of course, next we have the Shadow Bond line or being a spot healer for other casters, especially enchanters that are getting beat on with pets that they can't heal themselves. Give them an extra hand, then use your life taps just to drain other mobs in the area. It'd be a great help. And lastly comes Charming and DPS. So, uh, I mean, I don't really put DPS for necromancers as far as the highest as far as like a high <laughs> benchmark for necromancer effectiveness and the reason why is because 
you're only fulfilling the DPS role at a high level is when you when you're lacking players, but otherwise that's going to be reserved for rogues, wizards, enchanters, monks, and such and so forth. But not that you can't be a DPS, but it kind of comes with some caveats. The first being, if you're on a raid, you should make sure you understand what your group's norms are for summon pets. In some areas or some zones, it can actually be a detriment to summon a pet versus not summon a pet. For example, Plane of Hate, you summon a pet and it's viable to get aggro, same as in Plane of Fear. So just be careful, understand, I, and this is where I just say communicate with your guild on what what norms are. And also charming. Um, charming, you should, if you've watched my videos, you should have enough experience to be able to hopefully do it with some competence. But I wouldn't charm willy-nilly. Be sure you understand the risk benefits of doing it before <laughs> you start doing it in a raid. And now if you really need the DPS, by all means go for it. And if you're skilled enough to do it, go for it. But just manage your, I mean, I wouldn't say torch it and haste your pet until you feel pretty confident in the matter. There are some other things you can do, like taking death touches. Sometimes if you don't have any other expendable members of your guild, take a death touch, help help everybody out. In Plane of Sky, sometimes too, people will perform pet trains to pull out and inhale lock. Now, do this with your guild's instruction, and that's gonna transition to my next part. These are just the basic roles you're gonna fill. I'm not going to go over high level or advanced techniques because, well, for a few reasons. Number one, you should get a mentor or use them at your guild's discretion, your own discretion and your guild's instruction. If you're doing things like pet walking, making trains, um, tagging targets, you want to make sure that you're experienced to, number one, not train your own guild, not train others you know, not cause things that will make a concession, cause your guild to make a concession, because all these things add up to your, I mean, you could end up wasting your time, your guild's time, another guild's time if you wipe them. So make sure you get someone to mentor you if you do decide to go to the advanced techniques of, of polling and such. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of different guild server norms that you have to understand for uh, play nice policy etiquette, server etiquette, what that is. So I would highly advise you if you do plan to get get to them. And a lot of times you can fulfill these roles as a necromancer very, very solidly when there's that gap. But make sure you understand the potential risks of doing that. I, I wouldn't just go at it <laughs> and start pulling. It's good to step up and have some confidence and become competent and you know take leadership make sure you understand what you're getting into before you do that and i, I thought that was a vid cool video to do because me one to level 59 i was kind of dumb and clueless but once i started getting up and people actually needing me to step up for raids to be successful i really started to come into the class now with that being said if you're gonna to wanna to raid on a necromancer, you're, I, I highly recommend playing it to its peak potential because otherwise some guilds, they'll just ask you to play a cleric. And as harsh as that is, it's true. So if you wanna be able to play your class, learn all these different nuances. And, and quite frankly, a lot of people play better than I do. All that advanced techniques, I'm not particularly great at it. I'm, I'm middle, maybe middle high road. To playing it but I can play I can pull a raid or group pretty well patch up the rough edges and that's what necromancers ultimately do and the beauty of the class is they help they help those rough edges they help fill in the patches and patch in those missing parts of a raid to really make a, a raid more efficient function and add a lot of utility 
Next up, I'm gonna let you all take a look and gander into my bags and take a look about how I order them. As far as my reagents and other items I use, I wanna point out the premier reagent dealer in all of Project 1999 here in West Common Land, or no, this is, yeah, East Common Lands, Katha Spires, <clears throat> excuse me, Katha Fire Spinner, who will deal, you can get all your reagents for your clerics, Jasper, Peridots, etc. Tiny daggers. I need some more Peridots, so I am going to buy those. But kind of give you a quick, <clears throat> quick overview of what I got in my bags here. Try to keep the clickies or items that I'm going to be using here. I use the Duxy UI, so that way I can use a quick in and out of my primary and secondary. So if I need to use like if I'm fear kiting, go between that and I cite the shadow soul pretty quickly. Um, Shisher CN staff for the life tap over time proc. I use this night shade scented staff every once in a while to debuff if I don't have an extra mana slot or if I'm not able to sit down in med if I'm going to play a hate raid or something like that. I keep Jasper's Essence Emeralds. I try to keep more Peridots than I have right now on me. I try to keep around 40 Peridots and a few stacks of Bone Chips. Pearl, these Star Rubies are used for Banishment of Shadows, which is an instant death of, I think, an instant evaporation of a 48 or 49 level undead. So that can be kind of handy if you're in Plenty of Fear or Plenty of Hate, but the problem is it takes a long time for it to kind of recast and such. So it's not always effective unless you're planning on using it. It's definitely not a get at a jail free card. Keep my buffing items. These flowers of functionality are a quick disease and poison resist. There's some other ones for the other resist. Uh, this Coldane Hero Insignia Ring obviously can buff a damage shield, which I use in conjunction with the Banshee Aura to give me a 20 damage point shield. You can always, always use DS potions as well. That helps a lot. Um, Bone Cheer, which I could show, but that is just a battle proc. Gives you a, you know, gives you one bone chip that is... Keep this um, Falagrand staff for having something with Tash helps to. There's just like a lot of different stuff I keep. I think stock and probes are really nice. I showed out. I showed <clears throat> previously how to enter the crypt in Sebelus by using this. So that's that's really cool. And of course, you know, just a lot of other stuff that I keep. So yeah, check out that handy guy, that handy um, tip chart, but kind of wanted to give you an idea of how I order my bags. Obviously these being up here, this is not <laughs> functional at all. I just ran out of space. I got lazy after I got in a raiding guild and just like, oh, well, I'm going to keep the main stuff right here. I try to keep my reagents right here. So that way when I pick up stuff automatically, it drops in these two bags. But hopefully that'll give you some ideas about how to structure your bags and Kind of what items to keep into it. One site that I did use for research is this eqitems.com. This is my recording time up here. I thought it's pretty cool. It gives you progression, classic runes of Kunark, scars of Velius. So you can just check for gear here based off of your level, your race, your class. So XR. And if you just want to do a basic old best in slot, it'll give you really cool items for each slot. And it's got the Lucklin the uh I can't remember what these are, but um they give you bonuses towards like mana preservation to mana cost, be able to cost spell, 
be able to cast spells faster, not consuming reagents, so all kinds of stuff like that. So if you are in the Luckland area era, or if you play on a Luckland era server, you have that. Um, and this is another way to find cool clickies too. There's like this Shiden Revenant Bobble. I don't have this anymore, but it's kind of neat to have, as well as the Ivander's Hoop that's instant cast spirit tap, as well as like there's a Wand of Souls I think it can have, Wand of Darkness. And it just gives you a list. And I kind of like it. It doesn't just give you just the best item, but it gives you kind of a list of items. So you can see, oh, Dragon Skill Mask. That's really cool. Where does that drop from? Sleeper's Tomb? Oh, dang. Not going to get that one. So then you can just go back and see which one of these are, you know, realistically viable option to be able to quest or have drop. Um, so this is an extremely handy resource because I play a lot in Velius era and there's like a lot of cool items you can get, but if you go back to classic EverQuest, well, <laughs> there's a little bit, you've got much more limited access to resources. So it'll help you out with your travels if you're trying to find something era specific. And you can do show clickies, you know, show focus items, and then it's going to do it. You can even find items by zone. So this will show you all the neat little areas you can quest or find these items, get them to drop. So <laughs> all those in, in old Thule Swamp kind of. Not very cool. So like if you're going to, let's say, Guk, Guk, I can't remember if it's Gukta, Guk, or Guk, I say Guk. So you can see all the cool things that you're going to be able to find in Guk. Or if you want to do Plane of Fear and finding all the stuff that's in Plane of Fear for you, well, there you go. You got a whole list or Plane of Hate. Now, I don't think this is exhaustive because we are in classic. And maybe it does it by era, but let's go to fear. Yeah. So, but anyway, this is a 10 out of 10 resource. You can kind of pick and choose. And this works for any class, too. So, if you're a rogue, you're not going to be an Ixar rogue, but if you're a dwarf rogue looking for best in slot gear, you can actually check it there so yeah definitely must need must 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 use resource so use this check it out along with our essential items I had a chance to sacrifice down one of my characters that I no longer use my rogue so I thought I'd show this off here's here's how this works essentially you use a spell called sacrifice which you get in your 50s with this spell, you'll have to use a reagent of emeralds. You give that to a necromancer. What to do is you get in their party and they'll cast it on you. It'll take down experience and basically fill the emerald with the essence of a soul, which is an essence emerald. You can use this for convergence, which is a 93% necromancer res. You can use it for infusion and truce addition. Infusion sometimes is helpful, but the most, pr the prime, the premier <laughs> utilization of these resources are if you're a necromancer, you feign death and your raid wipes, well, you can res someone fairly easily to do that. And sometimes others will offer to pay you to do a corpse summon as well as res them. So I found the most efficient way of doing this is sacrificing from 51 to 50. We got 20 essence emeralds from doing that. You'll get a 5% permanent experience loss. Again, this is a permanent experience loss. Now you can't sacrifice yourself and you can't sacrifice 50s. So you'll have to die down to level 59 if you do decide to take some experience. So again, take those emeralds and put them into essence emeralds. Next one is Guide to Recharging Items. 
I mean, you should know basically this at the beginning of the game because some of you are going to be using uh, soap pots or blood of the wolf where you can recharge this, but you can go in and show it shows you the approximate cost to recharge. So you can see it's going to cost $160 to recharge 10 dose blood of the wolf. You can use this to see if there's any items that you need. Kilva's Flames is another one that's very popular. You can, excuse me. I had some fried chicken, so it's coming back up. <laughs> Not as far as the gas is coming back up. Um, so it's just kind of had to stop a moment. But yeah, you can look at, there's all these useful clickies here. Wand of Frost Bolts is like something really cool. You can see is it only cost five gold to recharge. Thin Bone Wands are like 11. Stocking Probes only cost you five gold. So you can get a lot of really cool information about recharges here as well as Plane of Sky recharges. Kind of what this looks like for cost. There's some pretty decent Plane of Sky items. This Instant Cast Levitate in case, you know, Lev is going to drop and you need to save yourself. As well as, you know, this Instant Cast Invoke Fear. I've never actually used this because I don't use a... I, I, I don't like going to Plane of Sky. <laughs> and I don't like having to keep... You saw how full my inventory was. Keeping extra items, yeah, no thank you on that. So... Another, another great resource. And I think the last resource I'm going to point out here... Well, there's one more that I want to point out. Actually, a couple more. But one of them will be in another video that's involving spells. But Guild's List, I don't think this is necessarily updated. Because you go to Blue Guilds here. And here you can check out what guilds do what so this is where you're matching your your play style to when you're vetting a guild trying to find a good guild for yourself you can see these are active guilds like asgard asgard is um i rarely see them anymore they're more of like a stinktum stream team recipe yeah so this hasn't been updated in quite a while so blue is probably it's not been updated even Eclipse, we're really not active anymore. But maybe for green, it's a little bit better. Yeah, this looks like it's a little bit better, a little bit more updated. Maybe not. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Anyway, this guy, this, this information, it's at least interesting to go over because they kind of share their rules or ideals in their play style so my recommendation is you find a play style that fits your needs and what you like to do if you really want to get into hardcore raiding by all means do it but don't go for a hardcore raiding guild if you play two to four hours a week you know find something with some scheduled times to do something that maybe you're not min maxing or getting a chance to get exactly what you want but they um you know they'll, they'll do some fun pl fun plane stuff and such like that typical raid times what they're after what they're recruiting you know stuff like this so it's helpful to find i mean e again you want to find a guild that matches your play style I feel like you're able to better support them at the same level that you can play. So you're going to be looking for a guild. Don't, I mean, I, I don't think it's cool to just join a guild, just to join a guild. Do as you wish, but try to find and ask questions. Talk to an officer at the guild. Say, I want to know what this guild is about. And unfortunately, what my, as, as much as I like the solo, what my guides don't really show well is the leveling process in, in socialization which I am when I first started this, this game I would do a mix of soloing duoing or grouping a lot so that way I can get to know people and you get to know behaviors of guilds by their members there's certain norms that they 
portray out into the world. Some, some guilds may be very much about helping others out. You notice that. And some guilds just are wanting to min-max everything and bulldoze the game. Which one of those would you prefer? And some of, I mean, there's, there's people on both sides too. There are. I mean, you just got to understand that. So, um, yeah, finding a guild, that, those are some recommendations for you. Okay, this might be my last resource, I, I promise. But the travel guide on Project 1999 I find is very helpful for giving you information about how to get around quick, including the transport pots in Timorous Deep, which if you zone in from, I can't remember, I think either Furiona V or the Oasis, you can get Timorous Deep and then just Levant down. You can get pretty close to those, as well as giving you information about where all the sucker or sucker points are. The reason I bring this up is once you're level 54, 55, you get access to the spell Levant, which is a self sucker, self cast sucker. And you can get around really quickly without having to get ports. For instance, if you use your hammer and have hammer over to over there, you can get over to, you know, Warslick Woods, or you can zone up to Frontier Mountains to get back to West Cablas pretty quick. So I'll kind of show as an example here. Let's see it in action. So I'm over here, just exited Siren's Grotto, and I thought this was cool because if you bind out West Waste, you're playing a mischief, you jump down, I Levanted, I got to Sky Shrine pretty quick. And from here, you can use this to get to Kale Drackle, move between Western Waste and Kale pretty quickly. But I made a pretty quick run, just maybe three minutes, all the way from that Siren's Grotto line to the dock, the pirate dock in Iceclad Ocean, which I thought was pretty cool. So you just Keep spamming Levant. There's so many different areas you can do. I, I don't utilize this enough, and sometimes I forget I have the spell. But at night, you can get around really quick. I should have just kept going forward. <laughs> would have shaved. Uh, would have shaved some seconds off. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, big, you can use this to make a big advantage. Just again, get over, get over the Kranas really quick, get a port in the North Krana. Even, I mean, go to West Commons, go Sakor across Kithakor to Rivervale, go into High Pass, Sucker across East Krana, go to West Krana, and then boom, you're in Hino's Hills. Kale's a pretty good good sized zone too, so this is pretty cool. But I can't I can't take full credit for this. I was watching I think it was Canker Sores. Yeah, it was Canker Sores. He's got a video up where he goes and does like Timorous goes out to Timorous Deep and gets to the gets to the travel pots there really quick and gets to West Cablas, so I got this idea from Canker Sore, so give Canker Sore a check out on his channel. But yeah, over got over to where's the zone? Eastern Waste. I should never forget Eastern Waste. That's one of my favorite zones. And the dreaded crash. So that'll happen. But we got back up. Sucker, I mean, East Waste. Yeah, I mean, there's not enough good things I can say about the spell. It really cuts down your travel time. And it's really nice when you are have a place to get to, like Kinos Hill, so... All right, well, that's that, anyway. So, yeah, make your travels a lot lighter and easier. Whew. Well, with that said, I appreciate you all stopping by. I had a lot of fun 
putting everything together this, for this video, I've got one more in the vein of Endgame Essentials that has to do with spells. It's probably not going to be as exciting, but I thought it'd be co pretty cool to put together like some sort of symposium or um, collection of the different spells, the special and unique spells as a necromancer and where to get them. But all right. Well, happy trails, everybody. Good luck rating. And I will see you all next time.